Hello everybody. Today we have another fuel economy test on my mission to try to find out what's the most efficient generator for recharging a solar battery bank off grid when the sun doesn't shine. And today we have a three cylinder Kubota diesel engine inside this light tower. We're gonna find out how fuel efficient it is at charging an off grid solar battery bank like this one. So here we go. Hi everybody, I'm David and I'm on a mission to take my house and garage completely off grid. Now I'm really close to doing that. However, in January, we have snow covering everything. We have weeks of cloudy weather and we just don't have enough solar production in the month of January, which means I do have to fire up a generator once in a while to recharge the solar battery bank. So this is a, a 48 volt, 30 kilowatt hour battery bank, lithium iron phosphate, and I've got other batteries also inside, but I wheeled this one out for the test. Now in the past, I've used this Honda EU6500. Uh, it is an inverter driven uh, gasoline uh, generator, and it got a, an amazing 5.9 kilowatt hours per gallon, and that is measuring the electricity going into the battery bank, which is really, really cool. So this light tower is a liquid cooled three cylinder Kubota diesel engine. These things are known for just purring along all day at job sites and being very fuel efficient. So I can't wait to test it. However, they're not known for being good quality power. The electricity inside is known for fluctuating in voltage and Hertz, which would matter if you're connecting it to your house. I wouldn't recommend connecting that directly to your home, uh, but it doesn't matter when you're using the charge verter. The charge verter can take in a wide range of Hertz and voltage and it still puts out that very consistent uh, 48 volt charging voltage, which typically is about 54 volts uh, most of the time when you're charging the battery bank. Now connected to the charge verter, I have a Victron Smart Shunt, which is over in this little plastic box. So it's measuring the electricity right before it goes into the battery bank. So we're gonna connect that up to the 240 volts of the generators and measure the electricity going in. Now, in case the battery banks uh, start getting full, I'm gonna be putting a load on it. I have my dump load over here, which is just a 55 gallon drum full of water with a whole bunch of heating elements. <laughs> so we can keep the battery bank at a consistent voltage that whole time. Now the light tower has an onboard fuel tank and I really consider just marking it, running the test and then filling it up and measuring how much fuel I put back in, which was something I did with uh, some of these other ones. The problem is that uh, it's more accurate on these little tanks. This has a 30 gallon tank and I didn't think I could be really accurate with it. So instead we'll take the fuel hoses off. We'll connect the fuel hoses up to uh, this big measuring cup <laughs> and hopefully we'll be a little bit more accurate that way. To quickly recap some of the other generators I've tested, we have the Honda EU6500 gasoline air cooled engine and it got uh, 5.9 kilowatt hours per gallon, which is really great for what it is. I thought it was gonna do worse. We have an Army MEP 831 Alpha. This is a single cylinder air-cooled Yanmar diesel engine, also inverter drive. That got eight kilowatt hours per gallon. I also had a homemade, a little uh, Harbor Freight engine that I connected to an alternator. That got 4.9 kilowatt hours per gallon. So I'm really excited to see what this three cylinder Kubota diesel can do. Inside we can see the nice Kubota. You can see it's a one liter three cylinder engine and it's connected to a six kilowatt generator head and a 30 gallon fuel tank. So up top we have the fuel lines right here. They're going to these fittings. So we're going to cut these little crimp fittings, take them off and bring those fuel hoses out of the light tower. I, I drilled some holes in the side of the container so I could zip tie them in place. There's two fuel lines because diesels have a supply and a return. The diesel fuel is used as part of the lubrication and cooling of the injectors. So this is diesel from the pump. It's not off-road diesel. I could save a little bit of money if I went with off-road diesel, but uh, this is what was available. Okay. 
As you can see, I put a little bit more than five quarts in. My intention is to run it a little bit, let it warm up. Once this fuel level reaches five quarts exactly, then I'm going to uh, start the uh, shunt and let it run down until we hit uh, one quart. That will be one gallon, four quarts to the gallon. You can see it kind of coming out there. There's an electric pump for priming it. Okay, so now the electric pump ended. We have roughly about 100 amps going into the battery bank and about 95 amps or so going into the load bank. Uh, so that's a five amp difference. The battery bank is currently at 50% state of charge. So we should uh, have a very steady voltage through this whole test. Uh, that means that a uh, very steady load on the generator. Uh, once that uh, fuel level reaches five quarts exactly, we'll start the timer and reset the history on the uh, Victron Smart Shunt. All right, so I made sure that nothing is touching. This container is not touching. There's an air gap. All right, so we're at five quarts. So let's go reset it. Over here, we'll start. So the timer's running. And now this is the app connected to the smart shunt. History, down at the bottom. Reset the history. So now we're at zeros, all, all across the board, zeros. There we go. And we're gonna keep a very consistent voltage because the heater is on. Almost there. All right, exactly one gallon used, an hour and a half. Eight kilowatt hours right there. Eight kilowatt hours is our big mark. Well, the fuel economy on this three-cylinder Kubota ended up being eight kilowatt hours per gallon of diesel fuel. Uh, so it ended up being the same as the 831. I mean, I didn't expect that. I thought this was gonna be just a little bit better than the 831, but nope, same amount. You know, I mean, this does have three cylinders, so more friction. It has a water pump, needs to keep cool. Uh, and the 831 is just a single cylinder air cooled. So maybe that's how it uh, affected it, but Really with the 831, I thought because it had to go from the PMA to the inverter uh, that we would have lost more efficiency. But hey, ended up working out the same in the end. So are those results what you expected them to be? Uh, please let me know in the comments below what kind of fuel economy you guys are getting from your generators when charging uh, batteries. 
uh, because we're all looking for the most efficient way to do it. Running a generator is not the most pleasant part of moving off-grid, but it is the reality of the situation if you're in the Northeast, like I am, of the United States, where it's uh, cloudy and snowy for long stretches at a time. If you enjoyed these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.